Hi everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial to show you how to create a conceptual mass in Revit and also how to apply roofing or framing members to that conceptual mass. So in this example what we're going to do is have a look at a space frame roof, something like this, and how we might go ahead and create that. Before we do that I just want to show you the, um, the target model if you like. So what I have here is that same space frame model, this is the analytical model. Um, I've transferred that across to robots and done an analysis on that. And I've also got all of my um, structural drawings, plans and so on. So that's what we're going to now create from scratch. Now don't forget that um, on my blog, which is revitstructureblog.wordpress.com, um, we do have all of these um, tutorial notes that you can follow as well on here. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm going to start off by creating the mass itself. So I'm going to go to um, Application button, New, and then Conceptual Mass. We'll choose a metric mass in here and then open. So here is the family editor and the first thing I'm going to do is start to lay down some basic reference planes. So in the project browser I'll switch to level 1. I'll use the reference plane command and I'll just start to get some of this information in. Okay, So I'll just draw these anywhere for the minute. Perhaps something like this. Okay, we'll just square that up. I missed the uh, snap point there. And we'll now get some realistic dimensions on these. So I'll make that 12 metres there and 12 metres here. Whoops, missed out the zero. And we'll set this one perhaps to 18 metres and this one to 18. Okay, so that's the reference plane set up there. What I'm going to do is basically create a, a kind of a barrel uh, roof here. Let's just set this one perhaps to 18 as well. And this one to 18. Okay, so that's the reference planes pretty much configured there. Now the nice thing is with the conceptual mass family that when we go back into 3D you can see all of these um, reference planes in three dimensions, which is pretty good. So we'll start off by creating the... Um, correct uh, work plane on this view here. So on the ribbon I'm going to click the set command and then pick on this reference plane here. So we'll now draw some line work that we might require on this. Now if I make the work plane visible as well this will help me out to basically be able to visualize this more effectively. So we go to line okay, and you can see I'm now snapping to the outer reference plane so let's make this 8 metres high. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. Okay, we'll now do another one over here. So again, I want to uh, zoom out a little bit so I can see that I'm in line with the reference plane there. Come up to 8 metres there. And we'll join the base together. And I'm just going to draw some sort of a three-point arc over the top of that. Yep, so that's my first profile created. So let's now create, go on and create a second profile. So I'll go to the set command, set my work plane at the back here, and we'll now draw another profile to the inner um, reference planes here. So let's spin this round this way perhaps, go to the line command, and again you can now see I'm on the inner profile there, so 8 metres, same here, 8 metres. And we'll get a closing line in on the bottom there. And now a three point arc across the top here. Okay, so there are my profiles drawn. So now let's create the uh, mass from this. So select the two profiles in here, and you'll see up on the ribbon here I have create form. Yep, and that goes ahead and creates the 3D object for me. Now at this point I'm going to um, take the visibility of the work plane off. What I want to do now is get an uh, intermediate profile through here. So I'm going to select the mass. Now I'm using the tab key here just to cycle between the various different faces and the hold element. And you'll see once I've got the whole mass selected, up on the ribbon here I have the chance of actually adding a profile. Okay, so I'm going to add a profile in, just approximately down the mid plane there. 
Now the thing is, once you've added a profile, you won't really better see it that well. So you can put it into the X-ray mode. This allows us to now see all the profiles quite effectively. And then of course we could pick on this curve here perhaps, and I'm just going to elevate it a little bit in the Z axis. Oops, let's just do that again. And you can see as I drag this around, you can see the conceptual mass updating to that. So perhaps we want to go for something like that. And now I'm going to switch off the um, X-ray mode. And that's my shape configured. Now what I want to do is divide this top surface. So I'll select the surface, like so. Up on the ribbon, choose divide. You can see at the moment it's literally just gone for a, um, a very basic grid on there. But if I go into the properties window, in here I can now start to create different patterns on this. So I could use a rectangular form in there. In my case, I'm going to use a rhomboid form in here. So you can see it divides that surface up. And if I now go into the properties palette, what I'd better do here is perhaps choose a fixed distance rather than a fixed number, and I could put in my value. But what I want to do is I want to set out maximum spacing on both of these. And I'm going to say not to exceed 2 meters in both the U and the V grids. And you can now see that Revit's divided that up quite neatly into all of these separate divisions here. So that's the, our, our mass created. So what I'm now going to do is start a new project. So we'll start a new structural project from scratch, like this. I'll make sure I switch into the site plane. That's purely because in, in the structural plane site, the view range is set all the way to the top. I'm just going to use the um, control and tab key to switch back to my mass. And I'll now load this into the project. Okay, so let's now go onto the site, click on component, and I'll now be able to place this where I want. You'll notice that it's uh, been placed on the active work plane, which is great. Okay, so that's in. Let's now make a new 3D view. Perhaps we'll just shade that in there. And I'm now ready to create my structural frame. So what you do here is you click on the beam command. We must make sure that 3D snapping is switched on and in fact that I'm going to use pick lines because I'm just literally going to be picking off these little lines here. Then I can set my structural member that I want to be using. So I'll just use this section here just for a minute. And then you can either start to pick individual lines or you can use the tab key to select modules if you like. Now, when you do this, what I also want to make sure is that the justification of these members is going to be centered about the grid, i.e. the grid is really the centroid of my um, object there. So let's uh, tab key on this again. Okay, and I'll just do a few of these cells just to give you an idea of how it works. Perhaps something like this. Oops. There we go. And now I can just fill in the gaps there. Yeah, we'll just do a few more of these. Now, what you're likely to notice, and this is a, a very common thing that happens in Revit, is as I start to go through this, if I just switch off the mass for a minute, like that, you can now see that the frame doesn't look quite right. Some of the members are kind of cut back, some aren't, and we've got a bit of a mess, really. What that is, is a property of structural framing um, in Rev the Revit model is to actually cut back. So if I select one of these uh, frames, and then use Edit Family on the ribbon. Okay, so we're now in the Family Editor. So let's switch now to the Floor Plans and Ref Level. So you can see at the moment that I have um, the, the CHS member here and it's stopping on this innermost reference planes. This is going to allow the cutback to happen. Now obviously I don't want that in this case, so I'm just going to drag it along to this reference plane, remove the constraint that was originally placed on there and lock this one in. Same on this side. Remove the constraint and then lock on here. Then all we need to do is load this back into our project. Uh, we'll overwrite the existing version. And you can now see all the framing has updated. Okay, so that's a, a really quick tutorial to show you a little bit of massing and then how we can apply a structural frame to that. Now again, the analytical model will all be nice as well. So if I just hide the mass here. There's my analysis model. So it's a really effective way of creating complex geometry using massing techniques that architects might, uh, might make use of. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. And in the next tutorial, perhaps we'll look at some other products uh, like Inventor and also AutoCAD or um, even the link between Inventor and Robot to create more complex geometry. Okay, I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much.